So I was thinking, what is the best way to start this review video? And for me, this is the only way. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that intro. I think I had to do it that way. These are absolutely stunning. So we're going to take a look at the brand new Mizuno Pro 221, 223, and 225 irons. Lots to talk about, a lot of testing to do, and these look absolutely stunning. So three new irons. So we're going to start off with the 221 iron. So Mizuno Pro. First thing you sort of notice straight away is the logo's change. And there's a big talking point here, to be honest. I know it's just a logo, but Mizuno Pro. So obviously we've always seen MP for probably the last 10 years or so. Japan have always used this Mizuno Pro. They've used it in the past. So this is a little bit of like a retro logo, I would sort of call it. But Mizuno are very strongly saying that this isn't a retro iron. They're not resting on the history and they've got an amazing history, haven't they? This is very much pushed forward and it's a modern iron and it's history in the making is what Mizuno are calling. So it's interesting to sort of see, but as always, this is just an absolute beautiful and that's why I want to hit this first. I'm dying to hit this iron. So 221 is the muscle back. So this is obviously replacing the MP20, the pure blade, and it's an absolutely stunning look. And you know, how much can you do to a blade to change it? Not a great deal really, but there is some subtle change we're gonna talk about. Let's get this first one hit though. Cannot wait to get this underway. Oh yeah, and that is gorgeous. Yeah, exactly what I was expecting to, to sort of see, feel, hear. Lovely ball strike. So these are six irons I'm hitting, which is a little bit different. Normally it is seven irons, but these are all six irons today. So obviously the numbers are just going to be slightly different. There, but you see 189 carry, 92.6 ball, sorry, club head, 127.5 ball speed, but felt amazing. So it's a typical sort of blade look that you're going to see. Very minimal offset, very slim top line. And they've done some aggressive beveling on that top edge. So this top edge looks thinner than what it actually is. Just some little bit of beveling on the top, which gives it that more of that thinner, Really true blade, it does look pretty thin to be honest, uh, down by that golf ball. And again, that's absolutely beautiful. And that wasn't flushed. And that's the thing we're gonna get around this muscle back iron is that instant feedback. You know, when you've just slightly miscued one, a little bit off center, you're getting some instant feedback there. I could feel I didn't quite flush that one, but the numbers are still pretty good there, to be honest. I haven't changed massively, which is, which is good. So Mizuno have just subtly changed a little bit of mass in this uh, muscle back. So from the MP20, they moved a little bit more weight away from the heel and a little bit more into the center part, a little bit around the hitting area, which creates obviously a little bit more uh, stability, but then that little bit more of a muted sound, a little bit more of that traditional sort of forged sort of feel. Obviously, we've got this grain flow forged, as we always see with Mizuno, and we still have that story of that copper underlay. You know, underneath this chrome, we've got the copper, so it's that layers of feel that's obviously was brought into with the MP20 range. Oh, that's stunning. I mean, I can't say much more. That is just feels incredible. The feedback, the sound, it's just absolutely on the money. Just cut that fraction heavy there, so that spin just dropped, just pops that ball out a little bit further. Obviously that's a little bit more me than the, the club itself. So the loft on this six iron is 30 degrees, so the seven iron is gonna be 34, so that traditional sort of lofting, as you'd expect from a bladed iron, not gonna be strong lofted. A little bit more of that consistency, a little bit more of that control. Oh, okay, just that little bit of feedback, touch toe, flown great though losing that little bit of speed so obviously that forgiveness levels you know you're just going to lose that with this traditional muscle back i you see that little bit of drop of uh, carry distance there just that slight drop of of ball speed so you know you are going to obviously see that so probably this is maybe aimed at that well is it, it's aimed at the more of that very skilled sort of golfer maybe that sort of single figure golfer you know scratch golf who's who's very consistent on the strike to get the sort of more consistency out there. So just a little subtle change of shape on these irons, again, in comparison to MP20. So a little bit more of a compact, shorter blade length, especially in those shorter irons, the eight, the nine, and the wedge is def definitely a little bit more sort of compact against uh, the MP20. Again, it's not perfect strike. I can feel it straight away, but God, it feels good even on those miss hits. That wasn't too bad a ball speed actually on that slight So Okay. Right, so there's the blade, that's absolutely stunning. I mean, the bag appeal there, and I really like that uh, retro logo, to be honest. Just something a little bit different, but very clean, isn't it? The high chrome polish just oozes class and, and you know, quality, doesn't it? I just love, love the look of that. Right, so jumping in, into the 
223 iron. So this is the MMC replacement, but a little bit different. Again, they've made some modernization to this and, and more so that it's gone smaller in its head. So what Mizuno is saying, this iron is basically built for distance, sized for tour. So very much a tour inspired head. So not dissimilar to the blade we've just tried there. Obviously the, the top edge is gonna get a tiny bit thicker, blade then it's gonna get a tiny bit longer, smidge more offset, but literally very similar on the shaping. But then when you turn it around, obviously we've got this cavity now and we've got a little bit more of that power sort of under the bonnet in a way. So it's a little bit of a, a best of both worlds. And it's noticeable that when you put that down, you know, that, that little bit more offset, thicker on that top edge, but not too thick by any means, slightly longer in that blade length. Just fills you with that little bit more confidence down by that golf ball. Again, this is a six iron. Ooh, that was a little bit bottom groove, but again, it's flown very straight. Feels good. Yeah, so just launched out a little bit lower there, just because that slightly low strike, it's been up a tiny bit. So again, we've got that grain flow forged, but now, this time now with a little bit of that cremoli sort of uh, mixed in that material. So just strengthens it a little bit, maybe a little bit uh, faster on that ball speed. And we've got a micro slot, which is hidden sort of in the back of the cavity of the iron. I'll pop a little image up on the screen. Uh, and that features in that four iron to seven iron only, obviously loses it in those scoring irons. So just helping again with that bit of that, that ball speed off the club face. And that's stunning. I mean, the acoustics there in comparison to that uh, blade, it's maybe just a little bit, what's the right word? Maybe just a little bit louder, but I'm talking a little bit, not quite a softer feel there. So the loft in this six iron is 28 degrees. So two degrees stronger than the muscle back. Obviously the seven iron is coming in at 32. So again, it's just a tiny bit stronger. Oh, that's a better strike. God, I love that. You can definitely just see that ball just come off that little bit quicker there. Yeah, I see a good strike there, 133 on that ball. Get on that spin, decent spin, 196, so a good bit of distance there, that bit of ball speed. Obviously, that's a really good strike of, out of the, the rest of those shots. So, again, we've got some aggressive sort of beveling on that top edge. So, again, it looks thinner than maybe what it actually is, which I think is always a good thing. Probably just tempts that, that golf who likes that very slim look or very fussy on that slim look. Bit of that, that um, maybe that sort of tour inspired shaping, which is what Mizuno is saying, but you still got that level of sort of not chunkiness is probably the bad word, but that that bit of uh, sort of meat behind the ball in a way. Again, the back edge is sort of beveled on that sole, so again, it's not a really it looks thick, but it's not because of that beveled uh, back edge on the sole. Okay, that's a good test. That again, that was a little bit toe side flung really straight again. Wasn't the perfect strikes at Busby, just down a little bit. So comment down below. Let me know your thoughts here. So would you be going 2-2-1 two, two, or 2-2-3? Two, two, I think for me, this is going to be the hot one uh, for, out of the three models we're going to we're going to look at. So we're going to look at the 225 in a minute, which is the HMB replacement. But I think this is going to be the hot one. Great looking iron, little bit of speed, bit of distance in there, uh, but also got that really good sort of feel to it. Oh, just pulled a little bit. That's a good strike. Really enjoyed hitting that. i say just slightly firmer feel, maybe against that pure muscle black, but I'll tell you what, it's still a very, very good feeling golf club. Okay, let's move into the 225. Right, okay, so uh, the, the HMB replacements, so the 225 hollow construction, and for me, when I first look at this, it's this is the biggest change from the previous model, and I think it's all for the good. Much more compact head design. Probably what I would find with the HMB of the previous version was it was just a bit of a, a, a too much of a beefy club head size down the golf ball. Obviously, it was performed fantastic. It was really, really forgiving. Maybe just didn't have that warrant to have an MP badge with it. Maybe I might sound a little bit harsh with that. Um, so this, this for me is a good change. 225, again, that stands for the hot metal blade. We know it's not a true blade because it's hollow, but I'll tell you what, you put that down by the golf ball, that looks fantastic in comparison. Minimal offset, a little bit thicker top edge as you're gonna expect from that hollow construction, but the blade length looks to me a lot more compact. It's definitely very similar to the 223 iron that we've just hit. I think that looks superb, much more appealing maybe for that golf who doesn't want that too big a head down by that golf ball. Oh, I've just pulled that a little bit, but that felt great off the face. And the other thing I found as well with the previous model was the sound of it was just a little bit, you could tell it was a hollow iron. You know, it was definitely a louder acoustic because of the hollow head design in comparison to like the MMC, the MP20. Okay, just 
just a slightly tugged, good strike though. Definitely looks to be slightly lower ball flight. That comes out, 134 on that ball speed, 207 carry, so we've got some good sort of speed coming off that slightly low on that spin, as we're gonna expect a little bit here, because the loft's obviously gonna get a bit stronger. So this, again, this is a six iron, 27 degrees of loft. So it's one degree stronger than the 223 we've just hit and the six iron. The seven iron's 30 degrees loft, so that's two degrees stronger. So a little bit strong on the loft, as you'd expect. And what we did see in the previous models, that's a good strike. Again, just a little bit pulley on there. That's a good strike again. I think for me, the big the big change is, is with this iron. The look's so much better than the previous HMB, and the sound is also so much better. It's definitely not as loud with that hollow head, so maybe a little bit of work with the acoustics and Mizuno have done there. Obviously, it's not going to feel or sound like the pure muscle back, but I tell you what, it's a really good feeling golf club and sounding golf club. So I just want to talk a little bit about the construction of the head because it's a little bit different. So with the two iron through to eight iron, obviously it's a hollow construction. We've got that laser welded grain flow forge 4135 camoli face and neck. And the back section of the golf club is a 431 stainless steel. We've got a 28.5 gram tungsten back weight, which is set inside and sort of low and deep. Again, we know why that is you know, reducing center of gravity helping with that sort of ball speed, helping with that sort of launch. And that, that features in the two iron to the seven iron. The eight iron doesn't have that as it transitions into the shorter scoring irons. So talk about those shorter irons, the nine iron through to the gap wedge, it's slightly different now. So we've got a laser welded partial hollow construction, which is the Grain Flow Forge HD 1025 body with a 17.4 back piece in the back of it. That's a nice shot. Really enjoyed hitting that, to be honest. I much prefer the sound of that, as I mentioned before. I think this could be a very good uh, option in those longer irons. We saw that happen, you know, HMB in those longer irons, um, and then maybe sort of moving into the 2-2-3 two, two, could be a sort of good combo split. Obviously, you've just got to take into account that little bit of that loft change. Good, really good. So I've got some little bit of the, some uh, Slightly thinner on the club face here, helping obviously with that ball speed. We've got that satin finish on it now, so it's not quite high gloss uh, chromes. A little bit of gloss on there, but not as much as we see in the bladed iron. And that's the same in that 223 iron as well. Still got that under layer of copper in the 225 and the 223, the same as the 221. Okay, let's go and check a few numbers out. Right, okay, so let's quick, quick look at the dispersion ring to start with. So the white one is the uh, 221, the muscle back. So you can appreciate that's a slighter, shorter hitting one, obviously because of the loft. Then the 223, which again was a good sort of dispersion there. And then the 225, obviously stronger loft, a little bit more ball speed, just a little bit more of a left bias for me with that particular iron, but could probably a little bit more me than the actual club itself. But obviously, as you'd expect, just see that little bit more uh, distance with that shot. And then if we just have a look at the numbers there, so you can see club head speed just actually got a little bit quick as I went along there. Maybe that just as I've sort of got into those irons a little bit more. I did pre-warm up, so that wasn't the case. I was going out cold with the 221, maybe just sort of moving that a little bit quicker as I gained a little bit of confidence, possibly as the head size got a little bit more. Who knows, it's hard to say. Ball speed obviously has increased, you know, with that little bit of speed of club head, but also then the loft change. And as you can appreciate there, you see the launch has also changed accordingly. Spin, as you can appreciate, it's changed as well. Maybe just got a little bit more spin actually there with the 223 against the actual, um, 221, which is surprising. I had a little bit of a low one in there. Again, that's probably more of my strike than, than anything else there with that 221. But you can see distance-wise, 186, 191, 203. So nothing untoward there as we'd expect. You can see that 225, the hollow-headed construction. He's got that launch there with that ball speed. You can see that height at 113, which is the highest flying of all of those with a little bit, um, a little bit more of a bigger smash on there as well, which is where that distance is going to come from. Okay, so there we go. Three fantastic eyes. Push comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Which one you would go for? Are you going to go and get fitted? And hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.